Why isn't that playing any sound? <laughs> Let's start that thing over again. All right. I'm going to do an intro now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hello there, fellow makers, including the prop tarts in the chat who are very patient. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Prop Live Q&A, your weekly prop and costume making question and answer session. I'm Bill, and we have a guest lined up and everything this week. Again, we're like five weeks in a row with guests. <laughs> we have Sparks, or Little Sparks. Hi guys. Uh, one of our friends who we got to hang out with at BlizzCon this year, a wonderful yes. maker, and uh, <laughs> known for making things like Chromie, which is one of my favorite costumes. <laughs> um, and if you want to check out everything uh, that Sparks is up to, you can go to twitch.tv slash little sparks, that's Sparks with a Z, and everything's over there. You've been doing a lot of live streaming? Um, I was uh, leading up to TwitchCon this past year. I was pretty much streaming like full time, and then uh, after BlizzCon, I needed a bit of a break, and then there was you know the holidays and all that stuff. So I'm just now getting back into it, but I hope to be back on my almost everyday schedule pretty soon and and get rolling on next BlizzCon. <laughs> of course, <laughs> gotta start start on BlizzCon. Yeah. Uh, months or almost a year early. Which I, I uh, have never done. <laughs> I always have grand plans and never follow through. Um, of course, I totally clicked on the wrong thing. Let me fix my... Where'd it go? There it is. Uh, I got a picture here of your the one of the many costumes you brought to BlizzCon this year. This is your Arthas. I can't remember which version of Arthas that is. This is Mystic Kingdom's Arthas. Right. And it was awesome. Now that one you made yeah. you made that for TwitchCon, right? Um, or... I had originally planned on it for BlizzCon and then I was persuaded by some friends um, and they were like, well, you're streaming this progress every single day. You definitely fit the qualifications to enter TwitchCon. You might as well do it. And I was like, I don't know. And then I went back and forth for a while. And then I decided to enter it into TwitchCon uh, contest. And so I did enter it there. I participated there first um, and then took it to BlizzCon. Awesome. And I got to see it firsthand yeah. in BlizzCon. <laughs> and it was amazing. Thank you. And uh, I think I even got some wicked cool video of you. Actually, I think I got video of you in two different costumes. You did. Yeah. My boyfriend watched the video and he was like, <laughs> why do you get to be in the video twice? <laughs> Make two amazing costumes. That's why. <laughs> that, that is was, great. It was it was for BlizzCon, but ended up, um, I actually entered it into three contests last year, and which is very, very off for me. I'm not really big on contests i normally don't enter contests except for blizzcon um but friends were very persuasive this year trying to encourage me to get my work out there beyond blizzcon because i get i just get a lot of people who are like i really like your stuff but i've never seen you before like where have you been i'm like basically if you've never been to blizzcon you've never seen my my work because that's really all i do is blizzcon so my friends are like no go to this con and enter here and do this and so I'm, I'm trying to spread my wings a little bit <laughs> get to other <laughs> things besides blizzcon what other uh have you ever done phoenix comic con I do. I do Phoenix Comic Con. Um, I usually reuse a costume for that convention. Uh, last year, I ended up making a new costume for it. I did a uh, custom version of Poison Ivy and wore that one day. And I actually wore my Master Chromie from Heroes of the Storm for uh, one day as well. I think that's all I wore this past year to Phoenix Comic Con. Phoenix Comic Con is brutal. <laughs> it yeah. really is. It's in June yep. in Phoenix. And I remember, I guess it was two years ago, um, I decided to wear, I wanted to reuse a lot of my Cenarius costume from BlizzCon 2015, that was. Um, and it, I, because it has like the big centaur body and everything, and I knew that that wasn't practical, so I revamped this into a druid costume, and I used most of the pieces from that Cenarius costume, but made like a long suede and fur 
skirt and all this like heavy stuff and I added long sleeves and then my friend's like oh you want to do a photo shoot before Phoenix Comic Con and I'm like okay we get out there it's 120 degrees I'm wearing these huge antlers this long wig all this fur and foam armor and it was uh, I it was disgusting (laughs) (laughs) it was so hot it was horrible I did. Um, I was there a few years ago, and just my Mass Effect armor. Trying to go outside was not even an option. Like, yeah. scurry from one one uh, misting balcony <laughs> to another. Yep. <laughs> uh, I've got a picture of that scenario up on the screen right now. That is very cool. So you're you're into World of Warcraft, are you? Huh? Yes. See that that is the modified version. That picture that's right there. That's with the skirt and with the the fur panels mm-hmm. on the sides and everything. Because Phoenix Comic Con is super crowded. Like BlizzCon is nice. I could wear the centaur body with the Cenarius costume um, at BlizzCon without problem. Because the the people are very spread out at BlizzCon. There's a lot of open space, especially if you don't mind going outside here and there. And Phoenix Comic Con is like wall to wall people. So fitting that deer butt and trying to drag that thing around um, in all the crowds at Phoenix Comic Con was not going to happen. So I had to adjust some things and get rid of the deer butt (laughs) for for Phoenix Comic Con. I like that, though. I like having multiple versions of of a costume. That's cool. Very neat. Um, So do you you said you've started something for BlizzCon for next year and you also said you will probably change your mind. <laughs> but do it you want do you <laughs> do you want to talk about what it is you're starting or potentially making or I started a gender bend version of one of the Malfurion skins from Heroes of the Storm. Okay. It's um a winter version of Malfurion. It's called the Ice Storm Mantle Malfurion and he's got his giant antlers i'll be making giant antlers again which was one of my favorite parts to make for scenarios um i get to make wings i'm obsessed with birds and it's amazing in my mind it's amazing that i have not made wings yet because i am so obsessed with birds so i'm really excited i they're not traditional style wings they hook to the back of the shoulder and the wrist and are just a kind of like an arm extension but um I get to make big fake feathers and all that. So I'm really excited to get to make wings. And I'm, I'm going to be using a lot of materials, uh, learning to use an airbrush. Um, all right. I, I traditionally hand paint everything. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of different type of casting. Uh, I'm going to try to teach myself how to do cold casting for some pieces. Because um, I want to I show people that I can do more than just carve cool things out of foam like, I, can, I can do other stuff i can work with other materials so this one is it's a very mixed media project it's got fur it's got fabric it's got foam it's got you know all kinds of crazy stuff so it should be fun that's great well i'm excited to see that what about um now when we were at blizzcon you did at least one panel i know because i caught some of it that was really great yeah well, thank you oh. i was i was excited to be asked to do that it yeah was, it was it was a shock that I got to do that because I am such a BlizzCon junkie, um, and it was it was one of those moments like going there on Thursday when they had to do all the mic checks and everything, and they had our visuals for the panel up on the big screens behind the stage, and I walked up and I was like, I'm up there, I'm on a big screen at BlizzCon because like my life is BlizzCon. I run, um, I admin a Facebook group for BlizzCon cosplayers. I start my blizzcon project very early in the year and it's just pretty much my entire year revolves around blizzcon um so to to be asked to do that was a thrill for sure it was uh cosplay 101 we talked a little bit about how we get started in cosplay how we choose our characters and different materials people can start playing around with and things like that it was and the response was great i had a lot of people come up to me the next day on on um and or later that day, I guess it was, and say, you know, I really enjoyed your panel, and so that it made me feel really good. It was a fun experience. Good. Well, I was one of those people. It was a really great <laughs> panel. I love seeing more um, fan run or not maybe run, but fan centric uh, programming at BlizzCon. It really mm-hmm. that really kind of makes it for me because the fans really there's something special about the fans at BlizzCon. Everyone's in. Everyone gets all the jokes. It's pretty great. 
Uh, we, it's a it's a very tight knit community, especially the cosplay community at BlizzCon. It's we pretty much all know each other. <laughs> we go, go year after year. We see the same faces, and we're very welcoming of new people. We have a very inclusive Facebook group called the BlizzCon Cosplay Discussion, mm-hmm. and we are. It's very. We're kind of strict with posting. You know, we we try to keep it on topic to just cosplay at BlizzCon mm-hmm. and what people can expect and and tips and advice on the costumes people are making specifically for the convention. But it's a very um, a very tight knit <clears throat> group. Uh, we just, I want to give a shout out. We just, well, kind of a shout out. We just lost a BlizzCon cosplayer a few days ago, Mike Biasi. He's amazing. He, uh, everyone knows him from his Gromash costume that won in 2016. And um, we're, it's very unfortunate, but we're a very tight knit group. So we're still, we're still reeling after that, but yeah, he's an amazing person. That was super sad. I, I met him actually for the first time this year when we were all hanging out in front of the, uh, in front of the um, uh, fountain there, and I we should probably send people over to the gun GoFundMe. Uh, oh, that would be really nice to help out the with his family. His I know his son is way into the cosplay thing as well. I'm gonna drop a link in the chat there. Uh, we'll have a link in the show notes as well if people want to go there and help out. Thank so, you very much. Yeah, that's yeah. really nice. Yeah, he was he was a, a great guy. Um, my Chromie costume, my Master Chromie, I've done a couple versions of Chromie so far, and the Master version has all these giant resin diamonds that I lit with LEDs. And when I started that costume, I had no idea how to make big, yellow, giant, glowy diamonds. Like, the only gems I had ever made were, you know, little, tiny, dinky, round things. And... Um, Mike was the one who gave me the advice, um, told me the steps I should go through in order to get those nice clean diamonds and it worked perfectly and without him that costume wouldn't have been as cool as it was. So he was he was a great teacher and a great cosplayer. And he will be missed. Oh, there he is. To lighten it up a little bit, I'd like to point out yeah. that Hey Patch was only twelve minutes late, but thanks for showing up, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and thank you everyone else for hanging out with us in the chat. We got Core Geek in there, a bunch of other friends. Uh, and if you guys watching live would like to send us a question about prop and costume making or cosplay in general or BlizzCon or Blizzard or World of Warcraft, <laughs> send us a question. PunishProps.com slash live is the place to do that. There is a, a form there you can fill out and send your question. Brittany is on the other end wrangling wrangling those for us. And uh, we'll grab them and answer them here very soon. But first, but first, I want to talk about the prop tarts. Our wonderful prop tarts. Uh, we've got our uh, prop tart page over on Facebook. We try and plug this every week if we can. Over 4,000 people in there now, which is just mind blowing. Everyone's talking about really cool stuff, projects they're working on. I see people here talking about the new show that Adam Ellis and Marcus Laporte are doing from Rooster Teeth called Master and Apprentice, which is wicked cool. It's a prop making show, high production value, really cool projects. I know there's a new video out today. I'm going to watch it as soon as we're done here. Very excited. Uh, As I scroll down the prop tart page, someone did a Malcolm Reynolds pistol build, which is fantastic. Uh, this Madeline here is doing, I don't know what these guns are for, but made some guns. Uh, Logan is making some bracers. Uh, someone else is making a stand for a mannequin, I think, and it looks super weird and creepy, but that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're looking for fun or help or inspiration, head on over to the Prop Tarts Facebook page. Uh, go make friends. Everyone over there is amazing. Let's see. Yeah, what else? What else? I have a couple of projects I've been working on. I've, this is something I'm really excited about because, uh, yes, hey, Patch, I'm aware of my microphone breaking up. If you were on time, you would have heard about that 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is um, my favorite gun from Mass Effect, from the whole Mass Effect series, the M5 Phalanx. I made this six years ago. <laughs> I made a mold to make this and the eagle. They could swap out the top to have the two different versions. And I never made one for myself. (laughs) Six years later, it's finally done. Uh, I used this as uh, for painting demos. And uh, there it is. It's all done. 
and I'm gonna go hang it up next to the rest of my Mass Effect guns and uh, be really happy about it. Also, other space guns that I haven't had one of. Uh, here's Ray's Blaster. I've I have made and painted I think five of these. And I still didn't get one for myself. I gave a bunch away at Emerald City Comic Con, but this one is mine. And again, I was doing paint, using it as uh, for painting demos for some upcoming videos. So I finished one of these as well. Now this isn't new to anyone. These are projects I've done years ago, but I'm I want to talk about it because I'm excited to finally have one for myself. <laughs> so that's what I've been working on this week. We got a bunch of videos coming out soon on some of those painting demos. Brittany has a big project that she's finishing up, doing a video of. That should be out very soon, and you guys should be very excited about it. But I'm not going to tell you any more than that, because I want it to be a surprise. Super secret. Yes. <laughs> uh, but that's it. That's all we have had going on. I'm about ready to go dive into some questions here. And once again, if you want to ask a question and you're watching live, punishprops.com slash live is the best play uh, place to send those questions. You ready there, Sparks, to do some question answering? I am. All right. This first one is for, totally for you. Uh, Corey of Nine wants to know, uh, Centaur, how? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> um. The centaur is made from a frame of two by twos with a pulley system that I rigged through it. It's uh, got metal pulleys and eye hooks and a cable or cables that run along the length of the body and along down the legs. And there's a series of hinges at the hips and and the knees of the of the legs. Um, there's videos somewhere. I think it's on my YouTube channel, which if you visit my Twitch, you can find the, the link down uh, below to my YouTube channel, I think. Um, but there is a video of me walking in it, and you can see the legs move. But it's just a basic frame, uh, very angular, and then the shape of it is made from styrofoam. And then I made a skin over the styrofoam after I had carved it into the body shape uh, out of duct tape and skinned it with duct tape and then sat there and sewed fur and covered the whole thing in fur. And the whole thing weighs about 20 pounds. There's the video. <laughs> this is amazing. So that is the, it, it ended up walking a little bit better than that. By the time we got it to BlizzCon, uh, we had adjusted where the uh, straps actually hooked to my thighs, which allowed me to have the legs move a little further with each step. Um, so it was a little bit better by the time we got there, but it, it was, it's wood, styrofoam and fur. It's a really actually, um, very minimal, uh, there's no electronics or anything like that. Uh, I have promised people that I will do a tutorial on it because I can't take the one that I made apart now. There's no way for me to show anybody the inner workings of it. Um, I have a couple progress pictures and stuff but i was really bad at that when i back in 2015 when i actually made that costume so uh i promise everyone i will make another centaur body um obviously if i'm gonna spend all the time making another centaur body i'll probably make a whole costume out of it something like lunara from heroes of the storm uh, but i will record the entire process show everybody how i scaled it to my body how i ran the pulleys um, I'll probably make some adjustments, especially to the shoes that I had worn. I had made um, these crazy hoof shoes. You see a lot of people with the the heelless hoof shoes that make their legs look like deer and stuff. Mm -hmm. I had a pair of shoes uh, like that that I had made. And having to lean forward and pull so hard on the pulleys all day um, ended up breaking all the blood vessels in my toes. Ugh. It was extremely painful to wear. Uh, so I will make some changes. I know things that definitely need to be improved when I do it again. But um, it was it was definitely a labor of love. But I really love how that project turned out. And I'm super proud of that one. Um, I loved I loved the foam work on that project too, the um, EVA foam work, all of the wood textures, the wood hand, the wood corset, um, the branches, all of that in that costume is all EVA foam. So That's that was a really fun one. Pretty spectacular. I'll tell you what I like. I like that half of the videos on your YouTube channel are baby chickens. That's pretty oh great. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> I raised chickens. 
I do. I raise chickens. <laughs> my YouTube channel is very minimal. I don't really post on YouTube very often. But if, if you're into cosplay and baby chickens, it's the <laughs> place to go. <laughs> um, let's see here. Corey of Nine also likes to ask if anyone has hidden talents. Do you have any hidden talents? For example, I can do this. I can make three loops with my tongue. Okay, I do have something kind of like that, but a lot of people think it's really gross, mm -hmm. and I'm and I don't know if I want to show it because I don't want to like gross people out. <laughs> Is it like but a? Basically, basically, I can turn my arm completely around uh, on the table. So. Okay, you like, know what? I believe you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But some people some people get really grossed out by it. So. Okay, cool. Thanks for the questions, Corey M9. <laughs> Always a good time. Next one here is Dane. Let's see here. How do you create props so quickly? Um, I guess in general, what uh, what do you do to be more to to be as productive as possible in as little time as possible? I'm actually really really slow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it takes me a very, very long time to make a costume. Um, I primarily work on costumes. I don't do a ton of props. Um, the sword for Arthas this year for BlizzCon was my first major weapon. I had done a simple staff for my first Chromie costume. I had made the the big wooden hand for Scenarius, but that was more like a glove. Um, and I made a little uh, Audrey II plant for my Poison Ivy costume. Very simple props. The sword was my first major, major prop, and it was about a hundred hours worth of work. Oh my! Um, it's all EVA foam, so it all every tooth, every horn is all carved from EVA. So it's very, very time consuming. Um, and but I like taking my time. I don't do commissions, so I don't have to crank things out. And I and I only do a couple projects a year, so I can take my time and and make stuff. That's at my own pace. <laughs> that is good. Um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the things I, I or a couple of things I do to be as productive as possible. Um, is that my I, I know that the most valuable resource I have is my time. So I spend more money on tools that make work faster and uh, more accurate, um, and materials that I don't have to compromise on. So, for a good example, um, I could make everything out of floor mats, right? I could go to Harbor Freight and get cheap flo floor mats. Or I could buy really good foam, like go to TNT Cosplay, get big rolls of foam that doesn't have any texture on it. That saves me time, and I'm willing to spend the extra money to get back the time. So, I'm not sanding texture off foam or uh, trying to deal with the foam that's got pock marks in it or anything like that. So I tend to, to be more productive, I just tend to spend more money. Yeah, I'm actually doing that exact switch for this costume. Normally I try to do a large majority of my foam sculpting out of floor mats, mm -hmm. and then I have to sit there and deal with polishing all the seams out and things like that because um, I don't usually take the texture off the back of the floor mats unless it's got that really chunky diamond plating texture yeah. on the back. Then I will do that one. But if it's just the minimal texture, I'll leave it. And I, I have an easier time just filling seams than sitting there sanding the texture off the back. But I promised myself with Malfurion that I would not cut any corners and I'm going to get all the best materials. So I've got two huge boxes of foam from TNT and I'm doing everything out of TNT foam for Malfurion instead of doing floor mats this time. I think you're going to be happier for it. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you another, one more example. Um, and this is, this is totally, I'm spoiled, but I'm also fully committed to this life. <laughs> um, I have two, actually, I technically I have three band saws, but I have two band saws. One of them has a blade in it for cutting foam. And another one has a blade in it for cutting wood and plastic so that I don't have to – so that I can be as efficient as possible with both of those and I never have to switch um, blades because switching a blade on a bandsaw is a pain. So the, the, the end product is better because I'm using the right blade and it's faster because I don't have to switch blades. 
So that's something to consider if if you have a tool like a like if you have a let's say a, a cheaper example if you have a rotary tool and you constantly you're constantly swapping out bits it's like maybe buy two rotary tools and keep your two favorite bits in it. Yeah. It's just something to think about. A little extra time or I'm sorry, a little extra money spent on, on something like that uh, can save you a ton of time. Redbird Props, uh, that's our employee page, is in the chat right now. She's very angry at her bandsaw. <laughs> she was having having trouble getting the tracking right on the bandsaw of her blade. Oh. Don't worry, Paige, you'll get it. I believe in you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dane. Great question. Uh, Titan Armory. I think I know the answer to this question, but Titan Armory wants to know, what's your favorite con to go to every year? <laughs> BlizzCon! <Yay. laughs> I do. I like I said earlier. I revolve my entire year around BlizzCon. Um, my my social media life is very revolved around BlizzCon, supporting other Blizzard cosplayers, fan artists, and things like that. Um, I I just I love engaging with the other Blizzard fans. It's a very tight knit community and uh, and fan base, and everyone's so passionate. Whether it's about Warcraft or Heroes of the Storm or Overwatch or whatever. Um, we all love each other, and the community at BlizzCon is my family. I love going there, and, see, like, that's where I see all my friends. Like, I literally do nothing here in Arizona except for work in my garage or in my craft room here, and I don't really do a ton beyond that. And then BlizzCon is where I get to see everybody, and it's just the best. It really is. I do I do go to Phoenix Comic Con, um, but... I don't really, I don't, I'm not really tight with a lot of the cosplayers here locally. I'm friendly with a small handful of them, um, but I never really got very involved. The, a lot of the cosplayers in my area um, that attend Phoenix Comic Con are very into the superhero cosplays, mm. um, which I do love Batman, but I'm not, you know, there's a lot of groups that are very like Avengers heavy or, or you know, the, the DC, Marvel and all that kind of stuff. So I... I just wanted to wear my Warcraft cosplays and everyone's, you know, that's, it's a comic con and you're not really appreciated so much when you walk in with your, your world of Warcraft cosplay versus something like Batman and everyone goes crazy at yeah. Phoenix Comic Con if you're in a superhero outfit. So, but it's a, it's a cool convention. I do hope to get to a couple new conventions in the next couple years. I have some friends pushing me to go to Colossal Con in Pennsylvania and uh, maybe Katsu Con or Dragon Con or something like that. So um, my family lives on the East Coast. So it is a, a possibility for me to do a East Coast Con if I can, like, mail my costume to them and they and pick it up when I get there. So we'll see. I, ho I hope to expand a little bit. Um, if you do make it to Dragon Con, I will see you there because that is awesome. my favorite con. <laughs> <laughs> I will say though, like this year we're we're pulling way back on doing conventions. Last year we just way overextended ourselves. Um, there was a point where I went to I was in seven different cities in six weeks, and that was too much. <laughs> wow! <laughs> but um, we are still going to BlizzCon and DragonCon and Emerald City Comic Con. So it's it's like oh we 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 have to we can't do as many conventions this year but obviously we're going to blizzcon obviously we're going to dragon con i mean come on awesome <laughs> i mean i already have my room for uh dragon con sweet <laughs> i i would probably attend twitchcon again i don't think i'd enter the contest again don't don't get me wrong twitchcon was an amazing ex experience um i was extremely honored to be accepted to go it was really cool i met cosplayers that i wouldn't have ever met because they don't typically cosplay at blizzcon um so i i got this whole new group of of friends that I'm now in contact with online and through Twitch and stuff uh, because of TwitchCon. And I was very honored to receive an award at TwitchCon. So it does, it holds a place in my heart. I, it was a lot of extra stress on me uh, as far as my costume build, because I knew that the judges at TwitchCon were going to be a lot more critical. Um, and they were the judges at TwitchCon, like, were literally like I'm not even joking crawling around me on the floor inspecting like my sword <laughs> and my shoes and stuff. BlizzCon they do a great job they but they have a hundred contestants so that it's the time that they have to judge you is limited but 
Um, but it was definitely TwitchCon was a bit ec- of extra stress that I don't think I'd want to put myself through again. But I might attend just to attend it because it, it was a very interesting convention. It was not what I was expecting at all, but it was it was pretty cool. Uh, thank you for the question, Titan Armory. Let's grab this one here. This is a material specific question from Bad Wolf Build. Uh, have you ever slush cast with Smoothcast 325? He's interested in making a mask with it to go for the clear look, but he's not sure if it will work. Hmm. I personally have not slush cast with it. I've only done regular gem casting with it. Right. So do you do uh, do you pressure cast it? I do not. Okay. I do I do regular just let it sit and hope that I don't get bubbles <laughs> kind of casting. <laughs> I do I will I usually use 325 or 327 mm-hmm. uh, for for my resin gems, but I always fight with bubbles. Yeah, I yeah. did get, you know, I tried the whole vacuum thing cuz a vacuum was much cheaper than a pressure chamber and all that kind of stuff. So, I I've tried a lot of things. I've tried vibrating uh, using like vibrating things to try to vibrate bubbles out. Um, I get pretty clear casts doing it the way that I do it, but it they're never perfect. Yeah. I wish I could have a pressure chamber. Well, the, so the challenge, and I have tried this with the Nuka Cola bottles that we did. Um, we, we slush cast it with uh, 325 with a little bit of tint to make it look like a, a dark brown but tra- transparent or translucent bottle. Um, when you slush cast it, there's no way th- those bubbles just stay. It's a thin sheen of resin on the inside of the bottle, and those bubbles just hang out there. They don't go away. Um, I have tried slush casting it for a few minutes and then putting it in a pressure pot. Uh, the problem is that once the either either the resin sets up and those bubbles are stuck there, or it's not set up, and when you put it in the pressure pot, all of that steeps down to the bottom, and you just get a thick layer. I did that. I, I, I slush cast 10, 10 layers of 325 into a Nuka Cola bottle and tried to pressure pot it after each thing, and you couldn't even see the uh, outer shell. It was yeah, wow. it didn't work. So if there's a way to do that, I don't know. I've heard of I've heard of people doing it with like food safe epoxies for making um, like glassware and stuff. I've never done it before, but I will say if you slush cast with three twenty five, you will get bubbles in it. So if you want it to be transparent enough to see through, you're out of luck. But I'm sure the folks at Smooth On, if you go ask them, might be able to help you at least steer you in the right direction. If you if you are one of the lucky few that have Reynolds Advanced Materials nearby, go hang out with them. They are the smartest people ever. <laughs> yes. And if uh, uh, if you're in the Seattle area, by the way, we just got one. Yeah, down in Kent. You're lucky too. Yeah, we have we have one about 20 minutes from me, and I go down there, and I'm like, I want to do this, and you guys need to tell me what I need to buy because I don't know. <laughs> they and they know they know everything. They're the smartest people. Yes, they are. Uh, let's grab another one. The last one was from Bad Wolf Build. Thank you very much. Our pal Kevin wants to know, uh, I've come to I've love come to pattern play. welded metals in forged blades, and I've recently become aware of anodized Damascus, a pattern welded titanium. It's new to me, Kevin. Uh, I'm curious if it's even possible to emulate this crazy colorful pattern with painting as well as how one would go about it. Uh, I have to look up a picture because I have no idea what this is. Is that like the the metal that looks like it's got like oil slick coloring to it? That's exactly what it is. That's really I'm cool, smart, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I got pictures. Um, that's crazy looking. So what I'm seeing is it, it's not. It's it changes, uh, but. It, this example I have up on screen right now, Damascus, seems to be what most people are going after. And I'm guessing that it's some sort of oxidation or um, like when you heat metal up, it'll it'll oxidize at different colors at different temperatures and all that. Um, when I see this, I think of really intricate masking and airbrushing. That's what I that's where I would start. But uh, holy crap, that looks tedious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, the only other way I, I personally would experiment would be maybe with um, things like mica pigments Ooh, because yeah. they give you those those shimmery um, and, and a lot of them even have color changing aspects to them. And if you mix mica pigments with a clear 
like polyurethane, like a uh, varathane polyurethane. And you can get these clear, but yet metallically pigmented paints. And if you were to do some sort of drop, like eye dropping and maybe layering using the eyedropper and different color mixing with the mica pigments in a clear varnish, um, kind of like people do it with their nails. Have you yeah. ever seen, there's videos where people like put nail polish on top of water or something and then they dip their nails and they get that cool marbling. There may be some way you could do that with um, like different metallic paints and get them to swirl and then dip your thing in. So there's, it would definitely take some experimenting. It's, yeah, no it'd kidding. It would be a fun project to try to pull off for you sure. You might be able to base coat it in one, like you were saying, mix mix your mica powders or any kind of pearlescent or uh, those two-tone shimmery paints. Do a base coat in that and then mask off the pattern, the sort of zebra stripe pattern with a masking fluid, like toothpaste or mustard or um, liquid latex. And then do another one of those shimmery paints the opposite. So if you did a blue shimmery one, blue purple one, do an orangey one. But again, it looks, I mean, to get that zebra stripe pattern, I think the most consistent way to do that would be a whole lot of tedious masking. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Shep Shepherd Amends in the chat. He says you can do the same thing with rattle cans. I've seen people do that. They spray paint on water and then dunk a thing in it. Um, so, yeah. That sounds like a lot of uh, fun experimenting. So, Kevin, if you do experiment with that, uh, let us know. Come back with your results. I'm not going to do it, <laughs> but you should. <laughs> uh, thank you for the question, Kevin. Uh, Kevin's a nice guy. Let's see. Let's grab another one here from James. Uh, he's curious about flexible 3D printer filament. Um, actually, yeah. So he's, he's talking about gluing or attaching those together. Uh, have you d ever done anything with like Ninja Flex or anything like that? I have never 3D printed anything. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I will. I'm, I just carve everything out of foam and yeah. I'm like, that, that works. <laughs> I've never worked with 3D printing. I'll, uh, I'll dive in on this one super quick. Um, so the, the material, I'm not exactly sure it's a, it's a TPU. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, but, uh, Ninja Flex or any of those other ones, let me see, TPU filament. It's a flexible rubbery material. I'm not exactly sure what the best adhesive is for it. I would recommend that if you're going to 3D model something to, to go connect together, build in as many physical connections as possible. Don't count on your adhesive working. However, I have glued them together. There's a tiny ninja star behind me. Where is it? One of these, I can't remember which one. One of them is Ninja Flex. And I printed it in two pieces and then glued the surfaces together get with it. barge. Just use contact cement. cement. And it seems to be holding. Um, but I wouldn't, like, if you have small pieces that you're sticking together, I wouldn't count on them sticking together or staying together, especially if there's going to be any force on them. And then another thing to try, this is something I haven't tried, but they make flexible super glue. So I would first try barge if you have it already. If that doesn't work, go get some super glue, some flexible super glue, and give that a shot. I should probably get some flexible super glue anyway to try on lots of other different projects. So maybe I'll maybe I'll go order that on Amazon right now. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of flexible super glue. That's something I need to check out too. I'm looking it up right now. Flexible super glue, um, Loctite. Uh, that does that's not flexible. Yeah, max strength, flexible, medium thick, premium, uh, cyanoacrylate. All right. So there you go. There's a bunch of different stuff you can try out. Uh, and again, um, James, if you give one of those things a try, please share it with us and let us know how it turned out. Thanks for the question. All right, another one is uh from Jerry. Jerry, see here. He's curious about backer rod, a.k.a. insulation foam. He's curious uh, how it compares to EVA foam when it comes to finishing. Um, so you've done 
most everything with EVA foam, but have you done anything with like insulation foam? I did do something with insulation foam. Um, I actually made my Arthas sword. The first version of it that I made on stream was out of insulation foam. I decided I was going to then try to cover it in thermoplastic. I had a whole big sheet of uh, thybra or thibra, mm -hmm. however you want to call it. And I was like, oh, you know, I'll just, I'll cover this. It ended up weighing so much um, that it just was it wasn't going to work for me. So I made the whole thing out of EVA. Um, if I had maybe paper mache it, uh, to seal the, the top of the, um, uh, the foam or I, there's different types of resin coatings. I know people use on the insulation foam. Um, but I, I didn't even bother. I was like, I know EVA foam will work. I just need to make sure that I coat the blade in, in resin and stuff when I'm done. So I typically just make everything on EVA. So I'm not really pro at the whole insulation foam thing. Um, I'm reading into the question a little bit more. The backer rod, I'm, I'm learning this now, is the, uh, the, the dowels of foam, of polyethylene closed cell foam that you can get at the hardware store. And let's see, Going Ape Costume is in the chat, says, uh, don't heat it up, it will deflate. That's good to know. Uh, yeah, that's like insulation foam. If you put your heat gun on on in, in the insulation foam, it like melts it. And... Yeah. So um, the other thing to think about, I'm not sure about the the uh, polyethylene, but I do know that EVA foam spray paint it, no problem. The uh, insulation foam, the extruded polystyrene, spray paint it, it'll melt. Any sort of uh, um, solvent in the spray paint will likely melt your, your foam. So always do a test on a scrap piece before you spray paint it. <laughs> or lots of, lots yeah. of glues will eat it too. Yes. So be careful with your glues. <laughs> yeah. Barge, barge perfectly fine on your uh, EVA foam, but it will definitely melt insulation foam and it might melt uh, backer rod. So the best thing I can tell you is just try it on a scrap before you commit. Thank you, Jerry. Good question. Grabbing another one here. Mikey's Nonsense wants to know. Uh, he recently had to move and lost a bunch of costumes and cosplay supplies in the process. That sucks, man. Uh, it doesn't look like I'll be getting them back. Has anything like that happened to you, and what did you do? Uh, I've been fortunate. I haven't lost very much, I can't think. Uh, I did destroy... Uh, I wasn't I wasn't in Arizona, <laughs> but I did leave a 3D printed prop in the car and it melted. So I had that. I happen. watched I watched that video <laughs> of your melted. Have you had car. Have you had any similar disasters? No, not of of finished projects. Yep. Um, I I honestly make tons of mistakes while I'm building things. We'll remake things a thousand times and things get ruined or I spill things on stuff. You know, all that kind of mess. But um, not not losing supplies or finished costumes. I actually just threw my very first costume away. Um, it was not the first costume I ever made, but my first time throwing one away yeah. because um, it didn't hold up real well. It was actually a warrior version of Stormy from Rainbow Bright. Yeah. Um, and my partner was the warrior version of Rainbow Bright, but her costume did have that happen. Her costume did get destroyed before Aww. she got to wear it. Uh, so I walked around a convention. It was Phoenix Comic Con as Warrior Stormy without her Rainbow Bright, and nobody knew what I was. Oh. And, um, so I knew I would never wear the costume again. There was a couple pieces that didn't hold up real well, and it was taking up so much space in my my closet that's now getting just there. It is <laughs> that is just getting um, way too much stuff in there. So I was like, you know what? It's just time. Stormy's got to go. So that one. I wish there was more pieces like I could have given it to somebody, but there wasn't enough pieces that really were in great shape. Cause that was actually like the second thing that I ever made out of EVA foam. Um, like my second costume ever. So it, it wasn't the greatest thing in the world and it just wasn't worth trying to find a new home for. So I have, uh, I've never, I, I lost a one piece of armor. Once I was building my dragon age costume and I had finished part of it. And, uh, I was, I still had a day job at that point and I brought it to work with me to show my coworkers. Uh, and I left or I lost it. Or I think, I, I think the cleaning crew saw it and it was just a little scrap of looked like metal 
piece of plastic. Uh, I think the cleaning crew threw it away. Oh. I had to, I just had to rebuild it. That's all. I mean, that's really all you can do. Um, all I can say uh, to Mikey here is start slowly rebuilding that tool collection and get some new materials and get back on the horse. Yeah. Yep. And uh, if you have to, uh, if especially if you just moved and uh, you're making new friends, look to a local uh, makerspace and, and go see if uh, folks there can uh, help you out, yeah, especially with tools and maybe people will have extra materials and they can help you get started or get back uh, on the horse on the horse quick. Good luck, Mikey. Let's grab another one here. Let's see. Uh, user 2006. Making a Titan from Destiny, yeah. Yay. Uh, maybe to get a smooth, shiny finish when I paint my foam, and I'm looking to keep things cheap. Wants to seal it with Flex Bond. My question is, what's the best way to sand it, or how much sanding should I do? So, do you have a favorite method for sealing, sealing. foam? Um, I have always been a uh, big fan of wood glue mm -hmm. as my as my foam sealant, and I use Elmer's Wood Glue Max. And but I have heard and have just keep getting people telling me you need to try Flex Bond. You need to try Flex Bond. I just bought a giant bottle, and Malfurion is the first costume I'll be using that product on because this project is about learning new materials and trying out new things. So. Um, but my wood glue, it was always my go-to and I'm kind of sad that I'm not going to be using my Elmer's, but, um, I've always had really awesome luck with it. I know some people have horrible cracking and all kinds of problems with wood glue. I love wood glue max. I never had any issues with it. I've used it on every single armor from my very first Chromie to Cenarius to Master Chromie to Arthas, like everything I've ever done has been the wood glue. Uh, one product I do use on my foam as a top coat to give my metal stuff a nice shine uh, that a lot of people don't play around with because a lot of people are very into spray things like top coats, clear sprays. Um, I use Verithane, polyurethane, um, indoor. It's a wood floor sealant. Um, I started using it because I have done a lot of polymer clay sculpting over the years, and it's one of the very, very few clear coats that you can put on polymer clay that won't over time get sticky uh, with it reacting with the, the polymers. So once I started cosplay years ago, um, I decided, no, I'm just going to try top coating my gold armor here with the Verithane and I got so many compliments and people asking me what do you use to top coat your armor it's like so shiny and 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 perfect and um it's self-leveling it dries insanely fast um it does not come in matte it only comes in like satin and gloss uh but I I swear by that stuff on things that I want to be shiny like metal does that go on top of the paint then Yep, that's a, a top coat forever. I just, I paint everything with acrylic craft paint. Mm -hmm. Even my metallics are all acrylic craft paint. Um, and then everything is topped with varathane, polyurethane. Um, the only thing that I have not used it on was Arthas because mm -hmm. I wanted Arthas to remain matte so yep. it looked like stone. Um, but all my other armors that are shiny and stuff all are coated with that as a top coat. And then the uh, wood glue after, like, uh, how many layers do you put on and how do you sand? Do you sand it down smooth? I do not sand it. Okay. I do usually at least three coats. I mix it with a little bit of water and I actually mix it with a little bit of acrylic paint. I'll usually ah. choose a color that I want to be my base coat. Um, a lot of times I'll use gray and I'll mix a tiny bit of gray into my wood glue with a tiny bit of water, mix it up till it's a drippy consistency and then I'll just do a few layers letting it dry in between. I never sand it um, unless there happened to be some like crazy drip or something that happened but usually it doesn't drip on me or anything so I love it. It's I've never had issues with it, like pooling or anything. I know some people are like, I hate wood glue. I use plastic dip, and I hate plastic dip. So <laughs> we all have our preferences. Um, I just I love wood glue. I'm hoping that I like this flex bond because I have a huge gallon of it. Now. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll play around with it. Uh, cool, great. Well, maybe maybe user 2006 will try and make his shiny Titan armor with some of that Verithane. Uh, I'm going to put that in my wish list on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'm making shiny armor, maybe I'll give it a go. Uh, let's see here. We got one from Ringleader Luna. 
I'm working on a Metal Gear Rising Raiden costume. I need to look that up. I can't remember what it looks like. And I have no idea how to get the muscles you see on his sides. I want to move easily in it and not be stiff. Uh, well, I mean, I'm not one to to uh, to cast aspersions because <laughs> I am not fit. But you could do a ton of sit-ups. I'm just saying. <laughs> No, the uh, the the suit is like a um, mechanical muscle suit looking thing, and uh, that's not easy to do. And I've never done a muscle suit before, but I have seen some people do really creative things by getting a flat sheet of foam, carving the back of it, the seams between muscles, and pinching and bulging the foam to uh, to make foam muscles, especially abdomens. I just saw one today. I, I did as well. I watched one of Batman armor being made in that exact fashion today. Yeah. I watched it while I was I was drying my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Uh, I, it was linked in the prop tarts. We've got Sharon here uh, has a Batman with, with crazy abs. I do believe is all EVA foam. Um, there, I think there was another one. Uh, but that that would be a good one to toss in, toss to the prop tarts uh, to see what they've been working on. And then there's another one I can't specifically remember. Da Riza, da, I can't. I I know him. I can't remember how to spell his name or pronounce his name. But <laughs> he was on Cosplay Me- Melee. He's a wicked cool guy, and that's his page. Where is it? There we go. And he does this a lot. This sort of abdomen, and of course there isn't a picture. Uh, but he does that chiseled ab. There's his Wonder Man. Not Wonder Woman, Wonder Man. Uh, so go check out what he's been working on, and uh, he'll he'll be happy to show how he does all that stuff. But basically, carving mus- musculature into the back of the foam, and then foam folding and pinching and gluing. Oh, there's a video. <laughs> Thanks, Nerdy Views. I will show the video. Um... But you could do that. It's going to be tedious. It's going to be a lot of work, but don't worry. Practice and you'll get it. Uh, yeah. So here we go. Cutting out the foam, carving trenches in the back, heating it up, uh, gluing it together, and pinching it. We'll link to this video. You guys can go check it out. Um, and uh, good luck. Good luck on all of your setups. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think we have one more question. Uh, Lupe Garu says, "Have you ever glued insulation foam to EVA foam?" Hmm, that's interesting. I have not personally. I'm trying to think uh, if I have or not. I can't remember. I'm trying to think of a specific example, but I I don't think I have. Uh, and if you go to this to that dot com, which is my favorite website for glues, their only uh, option is foam. It doesn't differentiate between the different types of foam. Yeah, I think you'd have to use like hot glue or something that won't melt the um, insulation foam because mm-hmm. the stuff you'd normally use on EVA, most of it melts insulation yeah. foam. <laughs> so yeah, hot glue is probably a pretty good place to start. Um, I will say. This to that.com, which I'm going to just do a quick tutorial here, everyone. If you go to this to that.com, there's two drop down menus. Their only option is styrofoam. So I'm going to see what they recommend gluing styrofoam to, say, um, wood. Let's see. Uh, a polyurethane adhesive, Gorilla Glue, uh, LePage's Universal Adhesive. Um, these are all glues I've never used before. <laughs> But uh, they also say the fastest bond we recommend is hot glue. So maybe, maybe hot glue is the best one to start with. Uh, so do a do a small test on a scrap <laughs> that you don't care about. <laughs> and uh, and again, if you figure out uh, the best option, give us a holler. We'd be happy to to uh, to learn ourselves. <laughs> that is all of the questions. Thank you guys so much for bringing those fantastic questions. 
time. That was a lot of questions. And thank you, Sparks, for hanging out and answering those questions. This has been absolutely a wonderful chat. Of course, <laughs> if you guys want to follow along, uh, what little sparks is up to you can find her on all the things twitch.tv slash little sparks um i've been going through your facebook page to check out all your amazing photos very well well presented <laughs> so head on over there give her a like and uh follow her on twitch because uh, do you know when you'll next be live on the twitch uh, tomorrow's Friday, probably tomorrow. Awesome. Uh, I don't, I don't typically stream on the weekends. Occasionally I will be like really gung ho about something I'm working on and, and we'll work through the weekend, but I'm usually a Monday through Friday kind of streamer. Um, I usually get on around 11 my time, which is mountain time here in Arizona right now, I think, um, which I guess is 10 Pacific in the morning and, and I'll, I'll just go until I have to eat or something <laughs> so, <laughs> so i just i just craft until i'm ready to stop and it's been really fun i have a really great group of people that come and hang out with me every day and watch me and keep me company every once in a while i'll stream a game or something but for the most part it's cosplay and and we're making the things i've got a couple projects started um i had a subvote cosplay where uh all of the people that subscribed to me over a series of months, they were able to vote on a list of costumes that I had picked out that were budget costumes that I felt that I could do under $200. And they decided on Dream Genie Chromie from Heroes of the Storm. Uh, I That's what that crazy looking wig behind me <laughs> is for with the giant bun. It is another Chromie, Chromie skin. So uh, I will get back to that pretty soon. And I'll be working on Malfurion until then and just making all the things. Awesome, awesome. There she is. That's yeah. that Extreme Genie Chromie. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my typical type of costume, but it was the most voted for. And it was one that well, I, I chose all the costumes for the list that they got to choose from. It is something that I wanted to make. It's going to push me out of my comfort zone a little bit. I don't typically wear revealing costumes or sexy costumes or any of that. So wearing a little bikini genie outfit is going to be <laughs> kind of weird for me, but... I will do it for my subs and for my awesome viewers on Twitch. So it'll be fun. I have I have some stuff started on it. So. Very cool. I'll, I'm excited to see that come together as lo as well as whatever it is you're cooking up. Uh, well, the Malfurion, obviously, for BlizzCon next year. And we will see you there. Yay! Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Uh, that's it for this week. Uh, we will be back next week with another wonderful and exciting edition of Prop Life Q&A. Keep being awesome. Thanks, guys. Bye. Good show. And thank you, Paige, for uh, doing.